can't get. Zach Gers can't block. Brett Zellick's too old. Brandon Graham was drafted too high. Vinny Curry ain't got it. Bo Allen can't fit the scheme. Michael Thomas can't fit the scheme. Nigel Brandon can't catch. Jalen Mills can't cover. Patrick Robinson can't cover. It's the whole team. It's the whole team. Here we go. Our guest is a guy that some clown said was too small for the NFL. Okay. Jason Kelsey wasn't strong enough for the run game. What? Jason Kelsey wasn't worth more than a late run flyer in the draft. What? Jason Kelsey is an all pro and a Super Bowl champion. What? Jason Kelsey is our guest on Good Morning Football. Yeah. 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 Jason, what's up? How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Oh, man, that was awesome. I'm going to need to take a breather, my man. Let's get right into it, Jason. That speech will go down in the history of sports, in the history of humanity, as one of the most memorable ever. Take us behind the music. How did you get there, up there in that costume, screaming what you screamed? Tell us the story, please. Well, the, I mean, the story had been building up for a long time. You know, as you just mentioned, you know, undersized guy coming out and everything. There was a lot of uh, those emotions kind of building up my whole career, for the most part. Uh, but then, really, it started really building up to the Super Bowl. Uh, kind of, you know, first number one seed to be unfavored in every single playoff game. We all felt that we were really this, like, underdog team. And uh, leading up to the parade, I just I couldn't sleep at night, so I'm starting to think about everybody's storyline, my storyline, the city's storyline, and it all kind of just culminated uh, into that day. Well, I'm happy you got your voice back, finally. It's going to happen very recently because you gave it all that you had. I have to ask you about the outfit. Was it your idea? How did you get it? Where did you get it? And what went yeah. into that? The Mummer's uh, outfit. Uh, well, I was sitting uh, on the couch with my wife, and I got a text from the guys in like this group chat, and everybody was talking about different outfits they were going to wear, um, and that kind of, you know, had the idea that you know, this is a Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl parade. If I'm going to do a parade, I should do a Philadelphia style. And the Mummer's parade is a huge tradition in Philadelphia. Every uh, New Year's Day, uh, the Mummer's actually play year-round. Um, but I told that to my wife, and my wife said, you should text Libby. Libby's my hairdresser. So you should text Libby, because Bob is a, uh, has been a member for a long time. So I shot her the text, and she got back to me within like 30 minutes. We had a suit ready to go. Love it. I love it. I love the outfit. I love Lily. I love Bob. Um, <laughs> Kyle Brandt put on the Mummers outfit recently, and I need your take on this. Kyle is a Chicago native, but loved the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles. That's Kyle in the outfit with Vince oh, Papali. Yeah. Jason, there we go. Jason, how do you do? I mean, it looks great, man. I mean, that's about as, as spot on as you can get. A little bit of a green T-shirt underneath. Not, not the full get up, but it looks good. Hard to look bad with I Vince I did Papali have a parasol. What's up? Uh, the best. <laughs> Invincible. I don't know about you, Jason, but I'm not making a joke here. The second I put it on, I found it to be very empowering. Like, I, it wasn't, I didn't feel emasculated or foolish. I felt like kind of like a sorcerer. How did you feel, not only up in <laughs> when you were screaming your speech, but going all down Broad Street through the city of Philadelphia, wearing what you wore? How did it feel? Well, I think, I think that all kind of played into it. I think, you know, obviously there was a long parade up to the podium. Uh, where there were some adult beverages and plenty of fans to uh, interact with. And that kind of built the whole emotions of the whole day up that even, that bigger, that much uh, larger. Um, but uh, Kyle, I mean, you, you had some great epic speeches yourself for the Eagles. So I'd be lying if I didn't say that. Uh, I mean, if anybody should wear that outfit uh, that I did, I feel like you should be the guy to have that on. So I appreciate all the support this year, brother. I they, love they, it. They you guys did the hard work. It was an easy, easy <laughs> thing to root for, man. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, and I, can, I can vouch for my guy, man. It's 100% it's authentic, man. So uh, hey. shout out to my guy, Kyle Brandt. Now, Jason, a few weeks ago, you mentioned something about someone pouring their grandfather's ashes into one of the hands uh, of your teammates during yeah. the parade. I need to know more about this story. What actually happened and did it go down? Well, I wish there was more to the story and I wish I remembered more of it, but there was, there was people that had the urns there all over the place, up and down the uh, street. Um, and wow. at one point, I forget the player who did it because it was such, there's so much going on throughout the whole parade. Uh, but one of the uh, players came up to me, one of my teammates, and he says, Kels, I don't know what to do. Somebody just put their ashes, their grandfather's ashes in my hands. 
And I look back at him, and he's literally got ashes in his hands. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you should do either. I don't know uh, what to do with that. But I think it just spoke. I mean, seeing that, seeing, hearing all the stories of people going to the, the games with their uh, grandparents, going to the games with their fathers, going to the games with their mothers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, wow. brothers, sisters, all that stuff. This has been so, the Eagles has been ingrained in Philadelphia culture. And uh, for this to be the first time that they were able to uh, host that Vince Lombardi trophy, uh, it was just a really, really special uh a special day for the Philadelphia fan base, and uh, they they came out in full support, and uh, even some uh, some uh, fans that are no longer with us, with us uh, made the trip as well. Mm. Well, Jason, the other thing that's been ingrained in Philadelphia, going back to the American Revolution, is this concept of being an underdog. You guys had the mask last year; you wrote it out. It was an incredible, powerful thing. All the fans in the link wearing masks themselves. I wonder now that the off seasons happened. You won the ring. The dogs had their day. Did the dog mask, does the dog theme continue to next year, or is there maybe a new theme for the 2018 Eagles? Well, you know, I, I still, you know, don't know that we're getting probably the respect that we should be getting as the uh, defending Super Bowl champions. Mm. Um, but I do, uh, you know, I think that you're always trying to look for motivation. You're always trying to find little things that enable you to push you forward. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, we've been uh, a starving dog for 52 years, and uh one uh, one uh, bowl of food isn't going to suffice the appetite. You know, we're still very much hungry. We're still ready to get after it. Um, and we're still, uh, you know, buying to repeat this year. See, I like the dog masks. I like the theme. The, that poodle, that white one, though? Yeah. yeah. That one's got to go. That's my man, that's that my man Bo much. Allen. He's a, he's a special character, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, shout out the bow. <laughs> Bow's in Tampa now, but still, the yeah. poodle mask worked. I yeah. liked it. Yeah. Your speech was one for the books. Kyle's also had several great ones, but there was another one on draft day that I have to get your reaction to. Oh, yeah. Tonight, I'm representing the Philadelphia Eagles, NFC East champs, divisional champs. So I have a feeling you're not sending Mr. Akers a mummer's costume for his speech giving skills. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's funny because Dave was one of the first guys that reached out to me after the Super Bowl parade and like shot me a text saying how much uh, he enjoyed the speech and how much he thought it embraced uh, Philadelphia. And to see him go down to the draft and do that uh, was pretty awesome. I mean, I, th I think those are the types of speeches that the Philadelphia fan base can get behind, to say the least. They like uh, a very uh, uh, vibrato, you know, kind of in-your-face speech, it seems. So uh, Dave killed it, um, especially being down there in Dallas. That was pretty brave of him. So uh, way to go, Dave. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, Jason, I'm looking at this quote you just said. I wrote it down. We've been starving dogs for 52 years. One bowl of fo food won't be enough to satisfy us. And I'm ready to run through a wall. Oh, and man. <laughs> talking about running through a wall, there's a guy you guys just added in the seventh round that our show has grown oh, to yeah. love. We have a tracker going for the amount of times we talk about Jordan Maialata, a guy who might not even make the team. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Here we, we go. We're watching the highlight reel. <laughs> have you seen the highlight reel? And have you met Jordan? And what is your response to the Eagles drafting a fellow offensive lineman who's never played football before with the seventh round pick? Um, I mean, I love it. I love the, the kid's got a great mentality. I've had the fortune, uh, I've been fortunate to meet him uh, this past week. He's got the, the right mindset. He's a, he's a great dude. Uh, we're really happy to have him part of the Philadelphia Eagles. I really wish, though, that we would kind of temper the uh, expectation level. You know, this kid's never played football. He's still trying to learn everything. He's got all the talent in the world. He's got all the size in the world. But those guys in that highlight film, no offense to them, but it's a little bit different caliber uh, type athlete that you're dealing with in the NFL. And, um, you know, he's got some things he's going to learn. I'm really excited to be a part of that process because you see the raw talent and ability that he has. Um, so I'm excited to see his growth and everything. But I, I really wish we would kind of temper the expectations a little bit. Let's let the kid uh, learn how to kick set and, and uh, get the fundamentals down before we, uh, before we start uh, expecting too much of him.
Yeah, sure. Maybe another show, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, pal. Good luck with that. Enjoy it. Temper this. Hey, before you go, I know, I, know you're, I know it's a cause close to you. The Eagles Autism Challenge. What is that to you? And then kind of tell us where we can find more information on that event. Well, yeah, the Eagles Autism Challenge. You know, Jeffrey Lurie, uh, his brother, is on the spectrum. He's really shifted uh, the Eagles towards this cause. Um, it's a huge event that's been pretty, I mean, we're close to $3 million, if not over $3 million raised at this point. Uh, every dollar raised goes to uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, uh, Drexel, uh, Thomas Jefferson University, I believe. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's an annual thing that the Eagles are going to continue to do. Uh, there's a bike ride. Uh, there's also a 5K that I'm doing. Uh, we have guys all on our team. We have guys on other teams. Ziggy Hood, I know from Washington, I think is participating. Connor Barwin. Uh, former Eagle is going to be there. Um, it ju it's just uh, going to be a great event for towards a great cause, um, and I'm looking forward to it. Awesome stuff. Jason Kelsey, one of the best players in the NFL at his position and also one of the biggest personalities, a Super Bowl champion as well. And don't you dare try to dampen our enthusiasm <laughs> over the Jordan by a lot of I'm, I'm not going to lie. Jordan I'm pretty the show, enthusiastic man. about it as well, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it, man.